Let me go ahead and stop the recording and uh, let's start. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead. So in the last tutorial, we talked about relationships. We also talked about the different uh, things like how to make it customize your tabs and all that kind of stuff. So today we're going to go ahead and talk about things called as data management. So what, what do you mean by data management? Data management means how, can, how you can control your data to be visible to which people. So there are different ways you can do that. Uh, there are multiple ways of managing the data. So for example, let me go ahead and So for example, through profiles, you so first of all, you have things called as a profile. Okay. And through profiles, you can control different things. You can control what IP addresses a user will be able to log in. Okay. So we can specify the range of the IP addresses. Then through profile, you can also set up the login hours, like at from what time to time people will be able to access. And then you have some general uh, permissions. So these things can be controlled by the profiles. But for two profiles, you can also see what apps a particular user will be able to see. Then you have things like tabs, what tabs that a particular user will be able to see. Then through profiles, you can control like what objects a particular user will see. So all these things you can do through the profile. Okay, a particular user has a particular profile. So every user in a, in a uh, every user in Salesforce will have one profile at a time. You cannot create a user without assigning him a profile. And a particular user can also have something called as a particular role. Okay, and uh, role can be like anything. Can be a VP of a company or anything. That is what the role is. So these are the different, different ways that you can control the access to your data. Now through profile, you can also see, uh, you can also set the field level security, means what fields a particular user will be able to see. So that is also, we can do it, we can, we can select them through the profile. So these are the different things that you can control through the profile. So a particular user has a profile. Through profile, you can control the IP addresses, you can control the login hours, the general ad, uh, admin settings and what app a particular user will be able to see, what tabs a user can see, and what objects a user can see. And then you can also control all the fields in a particular object. So in, in, a, in a merchandise object, you can control the what kind of fields a particular field a particular user will be able to see. So this is what the data security model is. So today we're going to go ahead and see another and see this one so like what profile can do and also we're going to talk about sharing rules what are sharing rules what are roles uh, what are queue what are groups etc so next thing that we have is the a particular diagram which will give you an idea on the visibility so first thing is we have something called as profile okay so profile will control something now then we have owd OWD is called the organization's wide default setting. So it will give you more access. So profile kind of give you limited access. Then you can you can widen the access. Means you can in, improve or you can increase the accessibility of a user through OWD. Okay, after OWD, even after OWD, if you wanted to give a particular user more access, then you have something called as a role. You can create a role and you can assign a role to the user. So that will also improve the accessibility of the records. Even after the roles, let's say you wanted to go beyond that and you wanted to give more access, then you come thing called as sharing rules. Okay. Then you have something called as sharing rules. And after sharing rules, if you want to do increase the visibility, then that is called as the groups or queue you can create. Or you can do something called as a manual sharing as well. So this is the level of X, level of visibility you can increase. So in this direction, it increases. So it increases the data exposure. So profile you have. So if you wanted to give more access, then you go for OWD. Through OWD, if you want to go more, then you have role, then sharing rules, books, queues, etc. So it is the data exposure increases 
as we go down this path. Okay, all of these from roll to from roll to this manual sharing, they are part of something called as sharing settings. Okay, we'll cover each of these, but this is just to give you an idea. So we are going to see. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, the the last thing that you said after group and queue. Group and queue. What's What's the last one? One? Manual sharing. Like if you wanted to share a particular record manually, then you can do something called as manual sharing as well. Okay, thank you. So this is how you do the data management. You can manage your data, your visibility of data, either through profiles or through OWD or through roles or through sharing rules or through groups or through manual sharing. So these are the way we have. So now let's go ahead and start with one at a time. So we're going to go ahead and start with the profiles. So as I told you, through the profiles, you can control different things. You can control the visibility of your application, which application a user will be able to see, what particular um, objects he'll be able to see, what particular tabs he's able to see, what particular field he's able to see. All those things you can control. You can control the login hours and all that. Thing. So, so far, if we go back to an application, what we have is we have created a user. And uh, what is the name of the user we have? We have only created one user which has a proof okay we have two users one is d at my tutorial rack he's a standard user and then there's another user we have is this system admin okay now one user has a profile of standard user and the other one has a system admin so now let's go ahead and log in as standard user and see what is the things he's able to see okay so now let's go ahead and log in as him so how will i do it so this is the username now, according to the standard user, if you go to the particular profile, you will see what all things are visible to this particular user. So this particular user has access to the warehouse application. Okay, so he is able to access all these applications which have this visible tick box checked. And then these are the different uh, standard tabs that we have and these are the different access on each of the tabs. He will be able to see all these invoices. Uh, invoice tab would be able to be, he'll be able to see line items, etc. And then if you scroll down, we do not have any custom object permissions given to him. Okay, so now if I go ahead and log into my, my uh, login as this particular user, what you think will I be able to see? So if I log in as a standard user, if I log out and log in back as standard user, what all things will I be able to see? Will I be able to see the warehouse application? Yes or no? You can type in, in, the, in the message body. Will I be able to see warehouse application when I log in as a standard user? Okay. Will I be able to see all these three different tabs when I log into him, when I log in as standard user? I'll go back to this uh, profile and you tell me if I be able to see all these three applications. So if I go to the profiles back again, yes or no, you can say, you can write it out. So we have a, if you go to standard user, this is how the standard user profiles looks like. Let me go back. So these are the tab settings. Then you have, these are the, if you scroll down, this is the uh, custom object permissions. And uh, if you go up here, these are the custom tab settings. It's default on. And then he's able to see the warehouse application. So if I, so you said he will be able to see this particular warehouse application. Then my next question is, inside of the warehouse application, will he be able to see all these three different tabs? Yes or no? Okay, so the first answer you guys gave was, okay, so the first answer is right that, okay, he will be able, when you log in as the standard user, he will be able to see the warehouse application. But when you log in as, under the warehouse application, he will not be able to see these three tabs. 
even though the default on is available. Now why? We will see it, but let's just verify if we are right. So if you go to the setup here and uh, we go to the users and inside of the user, let me copy the standard user username and log out from here and log in back as him. Okay, so if you go up here and uh, let me copy. Okay, this is the, then let me go put here. So now if I go inside, uh, so I'm logged in as the other user, the standard user. So you can see here, I'm able to see the warehouse application, good but I'm not able to see any other applications. Now, why do you think I'm not able to see other applications? The reason I'm not able to see is, even though the tab access is on, but I do not even have the permission on the objects. So if you go back and go back to the Salesforce admin profile, So if I go back and go back to the standard user profile, you will see here that even though he has access on the default on, he has all these custom tab settings to default on, but he at least needs a read permission. Custom object permissions are not given to him. So what we have to do is we have to go ahead and give him these permissions. Now the reason I'm not able to change is why. Okay, is anybody has trouble hearing me? Hi Deepika, you cannot change a standard profile, you have to clone it and then you make changes and save as you wish. Very good. The very name. Good. Okay, very good. Because, see, I'm logged in as, see Nick, I'm logged in as um, the admin, the, this is the admin, Deepika Khanna, so I'm logged in as D Khanna, but now what I can do is I'm not able to change these custom object permissions. The reason I'm not able to change it because this is a standard profile and you cannot change a lot of things on the standard profile. So what we are going to do, we're going to go ahead and clone this standard profile. We're going to go ahead and hit the, we'll copy it, clone it, and we'll name it as a custom standard user. Let's see. We call it as custom standard user. Now we're going to go ahead and hit the save button. This time we will be able to make changes to our profile. Okay, custom standard. So we might already have that profile. So let's go ahead and go to the profiles again. And if I go to the profiles, we're going to go to the custom. So we'll start with the C. And then we have the custom standards profile. So if I go up here, custom standard profile. And if I go ahead and change this particular profile and give them read access. So you at least need a read access to see the tabs. Okay, minimum access should be read. Now, now, if I go ahead and log in as a, that this particular user, the standard user that I had earlier, will I be able to see the object, will I be able to see the tabs now or no? So if I log in back again, log out and log in back again to the other user, will I be able to see all the tabs now? No, because she still has a standard user profile. You need to assign her this profile, then only she will see. Very good. So, so Nick, see, I did it. I, I changed this profile, but if you go back to the user, Nick, that particular user still doesn't have the profile of the one that we changed. So we made a change to the custom standard profile, right? But right now, the profile of this particular user is still standard user. One thing I want to change is since the name of both of them is same, let me go ahead and change it to something else.
Okay, just to So now if I go back and log in back again as him, so what I'm going to do him the profile, so this new profile will instead of standard user, I will give him the custom standard user profile. Now if I log out and log in back again as him, this time I will be able to see all the different objects, the custom objects, because this time what I did is okay good. So this time I will be able to see all these different different tabs. So you'll be only able to read because we have only given the read access on these objects. What we have done is we have only given the read access on these objects. So you're only able to read the individual objects. You're not allowed to edit them or you're not even allowed to delete them because the minimum access permission we gave them is the read access permissions. Okay. So this is what is the... So first thing is through profile what we did, we changed, we gave the object permissions. Okay. We so we have how, what different object permissions we have. We have read, create, edit, and delete. And then there is, so we have what? We have to go back here to info at my tutorial rack. And go to the custom standard profile. Here, so first thing is we changed it to, so we gave them the read access on the, So I have to go back here, go to this first step of the So now if I go to the custom standard profile, let's go back here to the profiles. And if we go back to the custom standard profile, so we go up here to the custom standard user, okay, custom standard user. So here what we have done is we have only given the read access. We have not given any other access. So now if we go ahead and give them create, edit, delete, etc., all these access, then this time we will be able to see all the diff. We'll be able to edit those records. We will be able to delete those records. We'll be able to do everything. Okay. So because we have given them all these four different permissions. So now if I go ahead and save this and if I log out and log in back again as my other user, the st custom standard user, this time will I be able to edit the records and delete the records or not? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, very good. Yes, I will be able to do that. The reason is because we gave them the read, create, edit and delete access. So what we did is we changed the custom standard profile and we gave them all the access. So now if I go back and log in as the other user, the Jyoti one, so if you go back here and now if I go to the invoices or any other one of these, you will be able to see edit button and a delete button, okay? And you will be also able to create new invoices if you wanted to do it. So we will be able to do that. Now this is controlling the object level permissions through a profile. Now let's go ahead and see the tab options. So we have three different tab options available in the case of the um, in the case of the profile. So we have a default on, then we have is a default off, and then we have is a tab hidden. Okay, these are the three different options that we have for the tab. Okay, for the visibility of the tab. If if the particular option is set on default on, that means that you will be able to see the tab up here. Okay, you'll be able to see the tab up here on this particular bar. That is what the default on is. So if the particular tab is set to default on, means when you log in as that particular profile user, then you'll be able to see the tabs here. Okay, if you go ahead and change the tab setting to default off, what will happen is 
you no longer will see the the tab up here on this main main page here but if you go and click on this plus section you will be able to go ahead and see the tabs here that is when when you change the custom object settings to default off the next thing that we have is the tab hidden so what does this tab hidden does the tab hidden is basically it will hide the tab from the main bar and also from the plus section okay so it will hide it from everywhere and you will not be able to you will not be able to see that particular tab here so these are the three different settings that you can do on a particular tab so now if i go back and log out and log in back again so now if i go ahead and log out and log in back again as uh, uh, the salesforce developer the system admin and if i go ahead and change my custom standard profile so if i go ahead and go to the profiles here and uh, and inside of this custom profile if i go to this custom standard profile standard user click on the edit this time if i go ahead even though i have read create and edit permissions on the custom object i have everything set up here right but if i go ahead and take away the access from default off to default off uh, default on to default off on invoice so what i did is rest of them are still default on but i took the access from the invoice object and i changed it to default off tab so this is the tab settings i changed so what will happen is i will no longer see the invoice tab up here but where will i see i will see it under the plus sign so if i go ahead and log out and log in back again as the if i go back and log in back again as now what will happen is i do not see the invoice tab anymore i do not see the invoice tab now where will i see i will see it under the plus sign so if you go here even if you just search for invoice you will see the invoice tab is here so this is this setting for the default on so everything else we set to default on we set the invoices to the default off now the next setting that we have is the tab hidden tab hidden means you will no longer the see tab you will no longer see that particular tab not up here and not in the in the plus sign so let's go ahead and take that example so here if you go back and log in as the salesforce developer go to the profiles and go to the custom standard user and now if i go ahead and change it to default tab hidden let's go ahead and change it to tab hidden then what will happen is i no longer will see the tab for that particular object so if i go ahead and log out and log in back again now i won't see the invoice tab not i do i do not see it here and if i go under the plus sign i also do not see the invoice tab here so there is no longer the invoice tab so this is the another thing that we can do to the profile everybody is clear till this point yes deepika very good okay so the next point we have is Okay, so now if i go back and go to the salesforce developer what else we can do i do not understand why do not do not i see the recent items as a profile it should always pop up the recent items so now let's go back to my custom standard user everything is done the default on is done we have all these read create view all and modify all we'll talk about it later and uh, so we have done all this so we can control the now next thing that we have is what we can do through the profile is called the field level security field level security is in a particular let me go back and reverse my changes so i'll go ahead and change it to default on and uh, hit the save button so the next thing that we can do the, to the profile is see you you can control what tabs the user will see you can control what objects the user will see the records that user will be able to see and we can also control what fields of that particular object the user will be able to see 
okay we'll be able to do that that's called the field level security so if i go back to my custom standard profile user this one there is an option of field level security if you scroll down there is a field level security okay this is the field level security now under this field level security you have for the standard objects also and you have for the custom objects also so let's say if you wanted to change a particular field level security on a uh, on a particular field of that particular object so we are inside of the account object and uh, if you wanted to go ahead and change any of these fields let's say right now the ones which we are able to click that's the only one we will be able to change so these the account name that we can't edit anything on there so there is a read access and edit access if the read access checkbox is checked okay so there are two different options okay so if i go back here so under the field level security you can change what fields for that particular object that you're able to see for example once we have something related to uh, money let's we don't want to share let's say if you have created a we want we don't want to sh share the order total with any with anybody or we do not want we have wanted to hide it okay so you can control those things to the field level security so if the user will no longer be able to see a particular particular field on that object Okay, so let's say if, if, if you're talking about a recruiting application, we had something called as the salary. Okay, we do not want to see other people to see the salary for what we have for a particular position because then they might have complex and they might come back and hey, you're paying this much for this position. Why I'm not getting it? Okay, so those kind of things. If you wanted to hide a particular uh, field, then you can do that through the field level security. So th there are two different options that you can have: read and the edit access. So if this read checkbox is checked. And there is an edit checkbox is not checked. That means you are only able to read that particular read that particular field. You will not be able to edit that particular value for that field. Okay, that you are only able to read it. If the edit access is available, that means you all automatically get the read access. In this case, in this particular case, what will happen is you will be able to edit that particular edit that particular field as well. And then if the read access is not there. then what will happen is you are no longer will be able to view the particular uh, field so that field will be hidden from you so these are the different options that you can click for a particular field so right now we are under the account object and you can select which fields you wanted to make sure you want to visible which fields you wanted to edit them now if i go back and change go back to my uh if i go back to my custom objects let's say and if i click on in the, under the field level secure under the field level security you see all the uh, custom objects that we have let's say if i go to the invoice object and these are all the different different access okay now if i go ahead right now i'm able to see the open date okay uh, i'm able to see the status field uh, close date etc so let's say if you if you own error and i am also able to edit the uh, edit the uh, open date as well so let's say i do not want somebody to edit this open date so what i can do is i can take away the edit access okay now what will happen is if i log in then i'll be only able to read the open date i will no longer be able to edit the value of the open date so now what we have done is we have taken away the edit access on the open date field okay similarly let's go ahead and change the close date and take away the read access as well so as long as uh, read access as well so you no longer will see close date okay if you log in as this person you will no longer see close date but you will see open date but you will no longer be able to edit it okay so now if i go back and go to the i'll hit the say hit the save button now if i go ahead and log out and log in back again what i did is what fields will i be able to see i will be able to see only open date i will not be able to see close date and i will only be able to see the open date i will not be able to edit the open date now if i go back and go to the so now if i go to the invoices and if you click on one of these invoices you will see if i go to the edit mode here 
I no longer able to edit this open date and you do not even see the close date anymore. Okay, you do not see the close date anymore. So this is what we what the profile has done. So through the profiles, we also control the fields, we also control the objects, we control the tabs, etc. So no longer open date is visible. So if I go back and pick something which has an open date, so let's go ahead and see which has an open date here. Okay, so 5727. So there is we have we are no longer able to edit it. Okay, so this is what we have done through the field level security. So now if I go back and revert my changes. So if I go to custom standard user and if I go to their field level security and if I go to my invoice and take away and give the open uh, the close date access and take away the edit access. Okay, so now I'm able to see the close date as well as open date. So hit the save button. Now let's go ahead and create another user. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and create another user to make it more confusing confusing for you. So now this particular user, see, since we're using a developer edition, we have limited number of uh, licenses that we can use. So I'm going to pick the Salesforce platform. Okay, and uh, under the Salesforce platform, let's say we give John Q Okay, he has this profile and let's go ahead and hit the save button. Okay, so now this is my standard user profile, the other platform user profile. I Under the warehouse application, I only see the tabs. Now, in order to give this particular user the access on the, um, on the tabs and objects, what will I do? I will go back to the, to the system admin profile and change the standard pla the platform profiles. Since it's a standard profile, I will not be able to change it. So what will I do? I will go ahead and clone that profile and give it a custom prof, make it a custom profile, and then I'll be able to change it. So now if I go ahead and log in as Salesforce developer, and if I go ahead and go to the profile, So what profile did I give to the other next user? I gave the standard platform user profile, okay? Now, in order to make changes to this profile, I need to clone it, and I'll call it as custom Salesforce platform, okay? And hit the save button. So we have changed the custom Salesforce platform. Now here, I will be able to edit all the permissions. So I will give him all the default on access, and then I'll also change the read, create, edit, and delete. All this access, I'm going to give it to him. So now if you log in back again as him, what will happen is he will be able to see all the tabs. He will be able to see all the objects, okay? So if I go back and log in as, I hope I'm not going too fast. Okay, good. Now, okay. Oh, so what did I do wrong? Anybody can tell me what did I do wrong here? I still do not see anything. 
not assigned. Exactly. I didn't assign the profile to the John Q guy. Okay, so if I go to the users and edit him. This time it'll be this profile. So the in the field level security, what we did is we remember we gave the so we have now two different users. Okay, we have two different users. Forget about the admin for now. We have two different users. One is the Jyoti user that we have, and the another one was the John Q user. Okay, this particular user, what profile he has? He has a profile of custom standard user. Okay, and under this profile, what we have is field level security is set to read and read for close date as well as open date. Okay. In the John Q, the profile he has is not the same as this one. He has a custom Salesforce platform profile. Okay, he has a custom Salesforce platform profile and we have not changed anything on the field level security. So if you log in as him, you will be able to see everything and you'll be able to edit and modify the close date as well as open date. But if you log in as Jyoti, you will not be able to modify the close date or open date. You only will be able to edit it. So this is what we have done here. So let's just verify what we have done so far. So now if I go to the John Q profile, okay, if you go to the John Q user, If I go to the John Q user, now I see all these different objects. And if under the invoices object, you will be able to see all the fields. So you, if you go to any of the invoice, you will be able to see the open date. You'll be able to see the close date. And also, I'm able to provide the value for each of them. Okay? I'm able to provide the value for each of them because I'm logged in as John. And he has a platform user profile, which has not given any field level security. But if I log out and log in back again as who? If I log out and log in back again as Jyoti, the next person, in this case, he will ha he we have given the field level security. And this time, if you log in as her, she's no longer able to edit any of these two dates. So these are the different things that we can control through the profiles. We have already seen how to control login hours, IP addresses, and everything. Today we have seen how to control the object permissions, the, uh, the tab permissions, and the field level security which we can do through the, this particular object. Okay? Any questions so far? Deepika, if we give read and edit, no, then what is the permission we will have? I mean, how will it, the field will look? Okay, if, if you have already given the edit, right? So I, what will it, so if I go back here, if you have read and edit, Guys, help her. What will be the answer here? Will you be able to only read it or will be also able to change it? The value. She can change it also. Yeah. So, see, in order to edit it, right, it's, she she needs a read access. So as, as long as you click on the edit button, automatically the read will get checked. Because in order to edit the value, you need to first see the value. So in the case of edit, you will be able to edit the particular field. So if I go out and let's go back here and let me just change it to explain it. So if I go to the Salesforce developer and I go to the profile of the custom standard user, so if I go to the custom standard user profile, if I go to the field level security here, if I go to the field level security and I change the invoice object, right now I have only given open date and the close date, I only given the read access. In order to make them, if, if I check this other checkbox, date and this one. Now this time what will happen is let me take one off to make it understand. So this close date is only has the read access but the open date has the read checkbox as well as edit. So this case you will be able to modify the value of the open date as well. Okay. Now can you tell me why these are, these are graded out and I'm no longer able to click them? Deepika I have one doubt. Then yeah. what is yeah. the what if I can only edit access? Can I do huh? that? 
No, you cannot do that. If I take a, you, you can do that. Because see, if I click on edit access, automatically it got the read access. You can't do, you can't do that. Okay. If you are editing, you have to read it first. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you have to edit. If you are editing a field, you need to view the field. You can't give okay. the edit access and not and take away the read access. Question I asked: yeah. Why all of these are graded out? The reason is since all of oh, them are like standard, standard columns. Yes. And they look at yeah, auto number and all that. So you 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 do not have the access on those. Now. And number is based, this one is basically, why? Because it's a read-only field, okay? Because it's a roll-up summary. Now, let's go ahead and hit the save button. So what I did is I only gave the read access on the close date and I gave the read as well as edit access on the open date. So now if I log out and log in back again as John, okay? If I log out and log in back again as John, will I be able to read and edit the close date or not? So I gave away... So what did I do here is, listen carefully, okay? So I have two profiles, standard platform, sorry, custom platform. And then I have a custom standard user, okay? So on this profile, on this standard user profile, I gave the read access on the close date and ed read and edit access on the open date. So what will happen is, I think this is what I did. So what will happen is if I log in and John, if I log in as John, will I be able to read and edit both of them or no? Yes, because John doesn't have any field level security. Setting. What about others? What do those think? Pardon me? What, what about others? This is one person talking. Oh, <laughs> I thought about Okay. So this is what, okay. So this is, you'll be able to see all these. Okay. The next one we have is the custom standard user. In this case, read and edit is open. So in this case, if you log in back again as uh, Jyoti, she will no longer will be able to edit the close date. Okay, so if I go ahead and go to Jyoti. See, close date, it's locked, okay? And open date, you're able to edit it, okay? Because we have read and edit, edit access and we only have the, this one, okay? Any questions so far? Okay, now guys, I have another thing. Adipa, one yeah. Uh, yeah. question there. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, they have all these um, standard profiles that they've given. Uh, do they really have any kind of a documentation just to know what the profile does instead of going through each of them, what what access they have, does they also provide? Like what, what does the platform one has compared to standard user? Do we have any kind of a... No, like, no, no, I don't know. I would probably have to go in the documentation. But in the documentation also, I've not given all because there's so many. They, they can't like... You have to go in the profile and see what each of the profile does. Yeah, they have a set of standard users, like uh, user profiles, right? So that's yeah. what I was wondering. Why would you have that unless there's some demarcation between each of them so that you can clone them, right? You get, those are the standard ones. But uh, it is like going through each of them just to check, okay, what is... No, but it's like based on like user permissions, you have like, see, I know a few of them. In the, in the let's say we take the platform user in if let's, so... That's a good question. Let me go back and explain to you. So if I go to log out. So the main one I know is let's go to the standard user. Okay. So standard user came under the different license and the standard platform came under the different license, right? So if I go to the profiles, And uh, so the standard platform one is you cannot assign the standard applications. Okay, so the so there is like there is like for the main main reasons like for the main uh, hierarchy they have made it certain discriminations. So if you go to the standard platform user, 
and if I go to the standard user. So, since this is under standard user, if you click on the edit button, you see that these are the application settings that you get, all these applications. But if you log in as the platform user, you cannot change, you do not get any other access visibility. You only have access to these, uh, to the to your custom application. You do not get access. Yeah. So you see, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, see the, that, that, so basically the license. Yeah, what license is, yeah. So you're based on that, you there is a certain uh, difference you can make because one comes under the platform user, the other one comes as a standard user. So there is based on the main license, they are like categorized. Similarly, if you go to a marketing one, you will only see things related to marketing, like campaigns and all that kind of stuff. So there is okay, a okay. general, and then they have like subcategories. But like this is, I know one example where see platform example, uh, the platform user, it mm -hmm. does not have access on the account and all that. Okay, because yeah, that makes sense, right? Yeah. yeah. So Thank next, you. yeah. So we have, so we did this one platform. Uh, we did the profiles now. Now let's see, guys. Uh, if, if, let's say. We have, see, profiles are not, profiles are created not for one user, you don't get, you don't create a one profile, right? Profiles are meant to be shared by multiple users, right? So let's say if you have uh, people working in the sales team, you create a profile for them, okay? And, if, so, and you give one profile to multiple users. And uh, now, let's say if there are five users working under a team, okay? Five users working under a team, let's say we have John, we have uh, Harry, uh, then we have Jyoti, then we have is uh, Samantha, etc. Okay, now out of them one user, all of them has the same profile. Okay, all of them has the uh, custom standard profile that we have, standard user profile. Now let's say, now let's say John has to work on something, okay, for a limited period of time or it has, needs some additional access. So what happens is, what are you going to do in this case? Are you going to go ahead and create a whole different profile for John or what do you think is a better option here? See, all of these have the same profile. Now, what will happen is all of these, okay, let me repeat the question. All of these have the same profile, means they have access of the applications, of the tabs, everything is same. But let's say I wanted to give a specific permission to John, okay? And uh, if you go ahead, yes, exactly. So then, um, so what we're going to do here is, we are going to go ahead and talk about, Nick, if you create a custom profile, then it's, see, profiles are meant to be shared. That's why you should not create a custom profile for every new user, okay? So in this kind of scenario, yes, you can achieve your goal based on creating a custom profile and create a whole different profile for John, and then one he's one is no longer needed, then he'll be taken back to the original profile. Yes, you can do that, but that's not a good practice. In these kind of scenarios where you wanted to give additional access, then we will talk about permission sets. Okay, then we have something called as permission sets. Okay, so the permission sets, guys, you can give uh, you can give multiple permission sets to a particular user. You can only give one profile at a time to a user, but a user can have multiple permission sets. Okay, a user can have multiple permission sets. Okay, so now let's go back and uh, go to the new condition. So what we're going to do is, and we are going to go ahead and create a permission set specifically for John. So in this case, guys, we can, through permission set, you can grant more access to a particular user. You cannot take away the access that already he has on, through, on that user. Okay, so let's say, what I mean by that is very important point here. So there are two points to note. One thing is, One profile can be given to only one, so one pro, one user can only have one profile at a time. Okay, let me write it this way. One user can only have one profile at a time. 
okay one user can only have one profile at a time you can change the profile but on one point of time one user will only have one profile but one user can have multiple permission sets assigned to him okay one particular user can have multiple permission set assigned to him through permission sets you can only grant more access okay through permission set you can only grant more access to the user you can't take away the existing access that he has what do i mean by that what do i mean by is let's say through a profile you have given him read edit and delete access okay read edit and delete access on the on the invoice object okay you cannot create a permission set saying he no longer has the edit delete access you cannot do that you can only use permission set to give more exam more access so yes they you can give the create access to that particular user as well through the permission object so whatever changes you can do through the profiles like you can change the app permissions you can change the field level security you can change the tabs etc all those things you can do through the permission sets but one particular user can only have one profile at a time but one user can have multiple permission sets at a time okay and through permission set you can grant him more access you cannot take away the existing access that he has already has okay so the so in our requirement when john need the special permission then we will be then we what we can do is we will be able, we will create a permission set now a particular permission set can have a particular proof, uh, can have a particular license what do i mean by that so if you already know beforehand that okay this permission set is going to the these particular users which belong to this particular license then you can create you should create a permission set under the same license okay under the same license but if you are if you are giving this permission set to multiple users which belong to different licenses then you can just create a general permission set and then it will work on and then you can add that permission set to different different users which have multiple different licenses does that make sense guys uh, can you repeat the last part okay so what i said is see in the see when you are creating a permission set they'll ask you for a license okay we'll see when we are creating a permission set you'll ask for a license so if you already know beforehand that okay this permission set is going to these users which belong to salesforce license they already know that okay then you create a permission set under the salesforce license because all this permission set is given to all the users which have this the salesforce license so you can create the permission set under the same license but if you do not know or if you know that this particular permission set can be given to multiple users which belong to multiple license category then you can create a permission set like a general one and then you can do, then you can do, um, then you can that give this permission set to all the other users did, did you get it so so you don't specify the license then you Is still like you, you can still specify it but you can still be able to give it to others so there's a there's okay. something called as a general uh when we talk about permissions so let's just see it okay let's just see it an example okay thank you so first thing is so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to the permission set yeah so we go ahead and create this new permission set and uh, we call it as let's say um, let's first of all take some access back and then we will use it okay so first of all let's go to the profiles 
Okay. So in order somebody so the question answer to the question is let's say if you if you are creating a pro if you are creating a permission set which you can uh, sh uh, which you know that you're going to give to the users of the same profile then you so that the users of the same license you can create the permission set under that license if you're not sure then you can just leave the license part blank and that particular uh, permission set can be shared with the other people belonging to different license and that is called as the organization wide permission set did you get it oh okay, okay. yeah yeah no. that's what i was that's thinking with yeah, so you do not provide the license. You do not provide the license in the case of where you are not sure to whom you're going to give it. Okay, and that particular permission set is called organization-wide permission set. You can give to anybody with any license. Right. Okay. okay. That, that makes sense. Thank you. Then next thing we have, so let's first let's first take away some access from the profiles in order to explain the permission set. So we go to the profiles here. Guys, you're going to be late today. Okay, because I have certain topic that I need to cover, so you might exceed a little bit ahead. So let's go ahead and go to the profiles. Mm, go to the standard and go to the standard user profile. Okay, and in this standard user profile, let me take away the delete access. Okay, let me go ahead and take away the delete. Oh, go to the custom standard. Go to the custom standard user. So go to the edit. Okay. Now through the custom standard user. Now if I go back and take away delete access. Okay. On the invoices. Take away the delete access on the invoice object. So if I go back here, go to the save button. So if I log in as Jyoti, because she is she belongs to the custom standard user license. If I log in as Jyoti, I no longer will be able to delete the invoice records. Okay, I'll be able to edit the invoice records. I will be able to create new invoice records, but I do not have the permission to delete them. So I do not see a delete button anymore because I have taken away the access. So all these you all the users who have this profile will no longer will be able to delete it. Okay. Now in order to explain this, let's go ahead and see if we are able to create a license, we are able to create a new user. So if I go back here and go to Salesforce, dev, uh, the admin account, and if you go to the users. Do not hold or we do not. The standard platform you can create. So let's do this. Okay, so let's be let's be let's just create a general uh, permission set. Okay, so let's on this custom Salesforce profile platform also let's take away the delete access on the invoice records. Okay, so the John will also not be able to delete the invoice records. Okay, so let's take away the delete access. Okay, so I've taken the delete access away from the custom Salesforce platform profile also. Now both of them will not be able to delete the invoice records so how will i do it so now if i go ahead and go to my permission set i can go ahead and create a new permission set and i'll call it as delete on all invoices okay this is the access that i'm giving you can name it whatever select the type of users who will use this permission set okay so who will use this permission set? Choose none if you plan to assign the permission set to multiple users with different user and permission set license. Okay, so if, if they belong to different license, then choose none. Choose a specific user license if you want users with only one license to choose this permission set. 
if you already know beforehand that okay these are the users which are going to have this permission set uh, and, and they belong to the same license you can select that particular license choose a specific permission set license if you want this permission set license auto assigned with the permission set so you can use a specific license if you all automatically want everybody with that particular license get this permission set so right now since we have two different profiles one is the standard platform user and the other one is standard user and they both of them belong to two different licenses i'm going to leave it as now hit the save button because i can give to both of those i can give to any one of those users now here what i wanted to do i wanted to go ahead and see you can do you can assign the apps you can connected apps object settings you can do app permissions everything you can whatever you can do through the profiles you can change it through the permission set so in this case i am changing the object settings so here what i'm going to do is in the case of object settings i which object i wanted to change i wanted to change the invoice object so if i go scroll down here you will see your invoice object here so you click on the invoice object and what access do you want to give him you wanted to give him delete access you do not have to change anything else first go ahead and click the edit button because they automatically know that whatever the profile the user has they already have all that access i am only want to give the delete access okay i'm only going to give the delete access so as soon as i clicked on the delete automatically everything else got selected okay so i'm giving the delete access to this through this permission set on the invoice object so what object is invoice object what access i am giving i am giving the delete access okay now hit the save button any confusion so far so we went to permission set we selected the license as none and now we are changing the object permissions we are we went to the object settings we selected the object that we wanted to change and we gave them the delete access any question so far no dipika okay so now let's go ahead and hit the save button so now what we have done is we have given the delete access through this permission set guys if anybody has any questions you can always let me know okay i know some few people are only saying yes or no so please make sure if you have any questions you stop me and ask so now if i give this a manage assignment so if i go ahead and give this particular permission set to which users i wanted to give you can select the users from here so let's say i wanted to give this permission set to jyoti then we're going to go ahead and assign this permission set to this particular user now if you go ahead and log in as jyoti then what will happen is jyoti will be able to delete the invoices because she has this permission set but john will not be able to delete it because through his profile we have already taken the delete access but we have not given him this permission set okay we have not given him this permission set so john will not be able to delete the invoices but jyoti will be able to delete the invoice reports let's go ahead and verify both these users so if i go ahead and log out and log in back again as jyoti then what will happen is if you go ahead and go to your invoices this time you will see a delete button available you can see here there is a delete button available okay means you are able to delete it now if i log out and log in back again as john so if i go ahead and log in back again as john q in this case i will not be able to delete the invoice record because i do not have that permission set which gave me that access okay now if john also gets that permission set then john will be able to delete it as well so that particular permission set since we created a generic permission set we can assign it to any of those profiles okay so now if i go back and go to my salesforce developer and give that permission set to john as well so if i go ahead and give the permission set so if i go to the user you can even go to the users you can click on his user oh oh john user okay john user and you can give him all the permission sets or we can just go through here permission sets let's just go to the permission sets delete on on invoices 
and uh, click on this one assign to manage assignments and in this case I can add this to the John as well so John will be able to delete the invoices so you don't have the done button now this time if I log out and log in back again as John I will be able to invoices and what will I be able to do I will be able to delete it now okay so through permission sets not only you can change the you can change the object level you can even change the field level security all these things so how we can do it let's just take a look at that one as well so if I go back to the Salesforce and go to the permission set that I just created So you can even change what apps that particular user will be able to. You can only grant more permissions. I'm saying it again, grant more permissions, okay? Here, if you wanted to go ahead and change the object settings, you can select which object that you wanted to go ahead and control. So you can select from here. All these are the different objects that you have. And uh, if you click on the invoices, You can see these are the permissions they have field permission so if you wanted to give more access to that particular uh, data so let's say in here the close date i think we did not give the edit access on the close date if i remember correctly so we can give that particular access here so if we go ahead and click on the edit button you will be able you can grant more access on that particular field here so here you can say read access as well as edit access so now they will be able to edit it as well as they'll be able to so both of them let's say so they'll be able to do that okay so you can even change the permissions you can change the object permissions you can make them tab settings available and visible so here it tells you what if you clicked on this available means the tab is available on the all tabs page okay all tabs means that the plus one the visible means when the enable the tab appears in the visible tab for its associated app so basically on the top top navigation so here okay if you have visible is open if you have available means it will be available under the plus sign so you can control all those things through the permission sets but the beauty of permission set is you can create multiple permission sets and you can also give one user multiple permission sets so one user can have multiple permission sets at one point of time but they only can have one profile at a time any confusion so far Scare the picker. Okay. Um, so the next thing. Give me a minute. The next thing that we have is the OWD. That is called the organization's wide default. Okay, let me pull up my notes. So in order to access the OWD, make every, everything clear, Vishali, Kiran, who else is there? Sakina, Nasheen. Yeah, <clears throat> everything is fine. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Now, the next thing that we have is the organization by default settings. Is, so in order to access the organization by default so what does that mean is right now what have what is happening is everybody is able to see every other record okay so even I'm a system admin even I created some records now John is able to see the records as well as uh, Jyoti is able to see the records no matter if they created or not they are right now able to see everyone's records okay they are able to see all the records now if you wanted to go ahead and wanted to make sure that only people who created the records can only see it or there's only certain restrictions that you wanted to put on what records are visible to people then you can control those things through organization wide share uh, default uh, organization wide default that is called OWD so that is controlled under the sharing settings so here you can specify what particular what particular access they have on the 
on a particular uh, object. Okay, so here you can see here invoice has a public read write. Line item has something called as controlled by a parent. Now, if you scroll up here, some of them has public read write transfer. Now, the, the, this there is divided into two types. One is the default internal access. The other one is default external access. Do you know what is the difference between each of them, guys? Why do we have separate for default internal access and we have separate for de default external access? What is the difference between them? Anybody know it? I think external access is like you have some other company that is associated with you. You give them access also to your org. Yeah, so external access is basically for external users. Internal access is for the internal users. So external access can be like uh, portal users or um, outside of your organization. So those are external access. Then in the case of the default internal access is basically the internal users of your org. Okay, so they have created a separate one here because to make it simpler. If they have only created like a like one access, what will happen is then they have to create permission set in order to give them more accesses, right? Because the internal user will have, let's say, uh, minimum access and then you'll widen up their access based upon their, their um, if they're internal. So instead of them, they created two different accesses. One is for the internal users, the other one is for the external users, okay? So each of these objects you will see they have different different uh, what you call they have different different uh, different different options so some of them if i go ahead and click on the this edit button you will see the lead object has a public read write transfer private read only etc but if you go ahead and go to the account and contract you do not see the public read and write transfer so there are certain certain uh, accesses that are only available for certain object there is something called as the public full access. This particular option is available only in the case of the campaign object. It is not available in any other object. So if you go here, there is no public full access. This particular object campaign has this access called public full access. Now this allows you to change the ownership of the records. What is the purpose of this? It allows you to change the ownership. Means if somebody wants to change the owner of a particular record, you can do that. It also allows you to search records. It allows you to report on the records. You can do all these different things if you have this public full access, but it is only available in the case of the campaign object. Similarly, in the case of the lead and the case object, in the case of the lead and the case object, you have another specific one, which is read, write, transfer. Okay, there is something called as the read, write, transfer. So this, what basically this one does, this one is going to give you, you can change the ownership, you can search the records, you can report on the records, but this is only available in only in the case of lead object and only in the case of the case object, okay? So there are certain, certain accesses which are available for certain objects only. Read, write is basically, as you know, most of, some, most of them has read, write. Now, what is the purpose of them? It basically allows you to edit the details of the record as well, and you can read the records. Then, the figure what? yeah. No, the one that we see just use means they can just read only if it's just use. Where did what, what is it? What is it? For price book. For price book, you see only use there, right? For price book, you have no access, view only, or use. These are the only three accesses you have. So how is it different? Like that doesn't uh, fall into. I think the that's just of for the reference. That's just for the lookup or reference. I think use. So, how many types do we have? Like one is the public read, write, transfer, full access. So we, know, what would okay, so we have. Uh, let me give you a number. So we have about uh, multiple of these. So the main one we have is the public, uh, the private, public read only, and public read write. Right? These are the main three ones. Okay. So the main one is we have is the private. Then you have is the public read only, and then you have is the public read write. 
Okay. Now specific objects are specific things. Let's say campaign has an additional one, then lead and cases have an additional one. So we have those additional one, but major of these, major one is these. So the question that you're asking is about the price books. So the price books has these three, the use ones, no access, and uh, what was the next one? The view only. Now the difference is use is the default access level and allows the user to access the price book information as well as use the price book configuration for opportunities with the parts. Okay, you can do that through the use access. View only allow the user to access the price book information but not to use that price book in the opportunities with the product. So you will not be able to use it but you will be able to view it. And uh, no access is basically is not going to give you any access on the price books and prices. So you will not be able to use any of these in the case of no access. View only you'll be able to see the price book in the case of opportunities which have the products, but you will only you will not be able to use them. In the case of use, you will be able to see the, the price book, but you will also will be able to use the prices. So that is what the difference in all these three levels we have. Did you get it? Yes, yes. Okay. So this option is only for price books. Then public full access is everything. Like you can edit it, you can delete it, you can read it. If the whole access is through the public full access. Okay. So let me go back through each of those. Public full access is only available in the case of campaigns and it allows you to do all those things. And the public read and write transfer that is available in the case of the lead case objects and in the case of the lead objects. And in that case, you'll be able to um, so let's say so let's let's see what is the difference. So if, let's say if Lucy is the owner of something, okay, of a particular case number one hundred one. Let's say if, but there we have a case number and uh, Lucy is the owner of that particular case number. So what will happen is under this public read write transfer, all the other users will be able to view it, edit it, transfer the ownership, and also will be able to create a report on that particular case because it has public read write transfer on that. Wherever only Lucy will be able to delete or change the sharing on that particular case number. That is what the public read write transfer means. Did you get it? Repeat the last sentence. Okay, so when case or lead, so this public read write transfer is only available in case of case object and the case of lead object. And if it is set to public read write transfer, that means all users will be able to view them, edit them, transfer them, and also create report. Transfer means basically changing the ownership. Editing, you know, is changing that particular object. But so that is what the public read write transfer is. Everyone will be able to read it, edit it, change the ownership, etc. But Lucy will be the who will be the owner, they are only responsible to delete that particular object. That is what the public read write transfer means. Did you get it? Okay. Yes. The next one we have is the public read write. As the name indicates, all the users will be able to view the records, edit the records, and also report on those all records. So that is called the public read write. Public means it is available for public. Okay. So let's say in the case, so let's say we if the mic is the owner of the account record, let's say if Mike is the owner of an account record, then all other users will be able to edit those records, will be able to view those records, and will be able to report on that particular object because he has a public read write permission. So if you go up here, okay, let's go ahead. Let me go to the cancel. So right now, these are the default accesses we have. So right now, account and contract has a public read write, means everybody will be able to edit them, read them, etc. If you change this to public read only, then what will happen is on the account and the contract object, people will only be able to see the account records, but they will not be able to edit those 
the call. So if I go ahead and hit the save button, this message comes up because once we change this OWD, the sharing rules will be automatically calculated based upon what is the new default value. And that might take certain amount of time. So that's why they're just letting us know that, okay, it will take some time. And uh, if you're okay with it, click okay and hit the save button. So what will happen is, now it has changed. Oh, let's go ahead and refresh it. It's still showing public read write because it's still going in. Now once you go ahead and uh, once it does it, it is automatically changed to public read only. And we also got an email that our process has completed and you're successfully changed the OWD. So now what we have done is we have changed the OWD of account object to public read only. So what will happen is before everyone was able to edit the account objects as well as able to read them. Excuse me, since now we only gave the public read access, now this time they'll be only able to see the account record. So if I go ahead and log in as John Q or somebody, and if I go to the, not John Q because he's a Salesforce platform user, so I'll go to Jyoti one because she is the standard user. So she has access to the account and everything. So now if I go to the sales and if I go to the accounts, wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. Here we come. Okay, just was thinking why they're giving me the edit button. Do not have the level of access necessary to perform the operation. So because we have taken away the edit access for the records, you're able to see these records, but you're not able to edit them. So if I go back to any of these and try to edit them, I'm going to get the message that I do not have the permissions because I took away the read you know, I only gave the read access to them okay so now if I go back and log out to the log out and log in back again as the Salesforce developer and I go to the uh, sharing settings and let's go back and edit it and let's change it back to public read write. Now can somebody tell me, it will take some time and uh, now can somebody tell me what do you mean by this controlled by parent? What does this default internal access mean? Because that's a child object of account so whatever happens, whatever permission you have for a um, parent is goes to the child also that's why it's controlled by parent okay what about others only one person is talking what what's what's going on guys i would say ditto <laughs> <laughs> how about nick vishali i don't know this uh, answer <laughs> okay nick do you know the answer controlled by parent what does it that mean it has something to, i think it has something to do with relationship yeah. So the same thing what she said, controlled by parent, and basically it's available in the case of the master detail relationship and you have like a detail object, then whatever the access that you have on the parent object, all that access you'll be able to get it on the child object. So if you are trying to edit a child object, you will only will be able to do that as long as the parent object you have the edit permission. So that is what the controlled by the parent means. Similarly, the public read write we have is basically uh, so the public read right is basically you'll be able to read the records you will also will everyone will be able to write those records as well so that is what the public read right means means just uh, initially if you go back all our invoice objects right now has the public read right okay so if you go to the invoice object you can see we have a public read right that means everyone Everyone, not only the person who created the record, but every other person 
will be able to see those records and also will be able to um, edit those records. Okay, so that is what the public read write means. So now let's go ahead and change it to private. Now what will happen in this case is only the person who has the access or the only the person who created the record or the roles which we will cover in the next topic or the roles above that particular individual will only will be able to see those records. That is what the private means. Okay. So now if you change the invoice setting to private then who will be able to see the invoice records? Only the person who created the records will be able to see the invoice records. Okay, not, now you will not be able to see anybody else records. That is what the invoice for private means. So if I go ahead and hit the save button here, if I go ahead and hit the save button, now if I go out and log out and log in back again as John, okay, if I go ahead and log in back again as John Q, then John is not going to see any invoice records. The reason is we changed the OWD settings to what we changed it to private. Now he does not see any records. So let's go ahead and create some records. So we'll go to the invoices. Since we are logged in as John, let's create. Uh oh. Do not have something called a John name. Okay, so let's do all the May ones we'll create for John. Okay, all the June ones we'll create for the other person. The, so now John has created, under John we have created invoices 7. Okay, let's go ahead and create another invoice here. And let's name it as 25, 30, status is open, amount is $100. Hit the save button. So now in the case of the invoices, you see these two, invoice 8 and 7, they are created by John Q. Okay, So John is no longer seeing all the other records because those records were created by system admin. And since we changed the OWD setting on the invoices to private, that means that only the, uh, that means that only the records who created will be able to see their records or the people above them in the role hierarchy. We'll talk about that next. So now, if I log out and log in back again as Jyoti, will I be able to see invoice records? Yes or no? If I log in and log out and log in back again as Jyoti, will I be able to see the invoice records created by system admin? No. Because that's no. As it should write. Jyoti will not see anything. Yeah. She'll be able neither, to see. Nick, Nick, tell me what's going Neither Jones nor... Uh, okay, I got said. it. Okay. What Nick, why did you say yes here? Well, I said yes because the uh, just thought that the changes, the uh, permission changes would take effect upon logging back in. That's all. Yeah, but then do you see if you log into Jyoti, do you see, uh, okay, if you log in as Jyoti, will you see invoice records? Yes or no? Nick? Uh, no. No, right? Because the OWD is private for invoice records. So if I go yeah. ahead and log in. I will not only I won't see the admin records the, the records created by admin and also I will not see the records which we the John uh, the uh, John created the reason is because those were because now we have changed the OWD to private so there is no records created by Jyoti so let's go ahead and create two more records this time we'll change the month to June so let's say one just to make a difference that. See closed. Let's see. So we have seven and eight is by the uh, seven and eight is by uh, John and nine and ten. We are going to create the week. Okay. So let's go back and go to the main on fifteenth. And so, Deepika, now according to your, your that the cone that you had drawn, 
because it's organization wide, it, it supersedes, uh, uh, it has more access than the profile and permission sets, right? And role will have um, more access to data than uh, organization wide uh, defaults. Am I correct? No, 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 no. See, through profiles, you can see to OWDC, we just did a private, right? So you have restricted, so you can think like, the effects that you can do is more in case of OWD means you can change the whole limit on those records. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. See, because here, see. Yeah. Okay. Don't get see profiles. You can you control control the edit and delete, etc. But you were be able to see you were able to see everyone's records through profile because we could not control what user can see under what uh, what you what records they're going to see. They are seeing every record. So OWD is basically to restrict people to certain records. That doesn't mean you are the profile is going to give you more access. No, no, no. You have restricted oh. the records. Like what records you're going to see in now? You have more control. That means you have more control yeah. on the what exactly. the data Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So now, so OWD private. You know that okay. Now no longer people are going to see each other's records. So if I go back here. And uh, now we have created two invoices, one under the John object, John, and one two under the Jyoti. So let's just leave the name here. So let's say John has two invoices. One is, I think, was 07 and 08. Okay. And Jyoti has two invoices. One is 09 and 10. Okay. They created these two invoices. This is what I'm talking about. 10 and 9 is by Jyoti and 7 and 8 was through John. OWD private we have done. Now if we go ahead and switch back to public read, then what will happen is they will be able to see each other's records. Okay, so if I go out and log in back again as a Salesforce developer, then what will happen is if I go to the old uh, sharing settings, Go to the private, change it this one to public, read only. This case, what will happen, guys? In this case, John will be able to see Jyoti records or no? Yes. What about others? Will John will be able to see Jyoti records? Yes. Okay, yes. Will he be able to edit those records? No. Okay, because it's a public. Similarly, will John will be able to see the records created by the admin or no? Yes. Yes, because it's public. Public means its records are for public. So let's go ahead and hit the save button. It'll take, it'll send us an email. Okay, it didn't. Okay, so now we have, okay, it did. Okay, send us an email, public read only. And now let's go back and go to the John records. John Q, log him. So now if I go to invoices, I logged in as John. John is able to see the records created by admin, the records created by John, and the records created by Jyoti. So if you go, but if you try to edit them, okay? Okay, these are the records I think were created by John only, but if let's say you try to edit the records created by Jyoti, if you do it in the edit button, she does not have, they do not have the permission, okay, because it's a public read only. Similarly, Jyoti will also not be able to access the John, we will be able to see the John records, but will not be able to read the, uh, edit the records. She will be able to read it, but not edit it, okay. So John, they, John can do anything on the records created by him. She, he can delete them, he can do whatever they want, okay. So they can do all those on the records that are created by that individual the owner. Now, next thing that we have is uh, Deepika. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So I'm a user. Uh, when my 
when I have private, I created some records. Then suddenly it became public, but I don't want whatever I have created as a private responsibility to be visible to the all the users when it becomes public. Can we able to restrict them? Uh, okay, so. So as private responsibility, like, you know, I created some, but it became public. I don't want that private, whatever I created at the time, to be shown when it becomes public. So, so the thing is, uh, public or I don't know what, what else we can use, actually. Okay, so, uh, so your question is, let me see what you, can you mute yourself? Okay, so your question is, let's say, if you have access, if you created some records, okay, and you do not want those records to be shared, but the OWD is for, uh, for that object shift from change from private to public or read only or whatever, but you still do not want it. See, you cannot do something like, is that what your question is? Yes. So what they do is OWD is basically set first. Okay, OWD is set at first. That means is the, when you're setting up the objects, you, you tell them, what is the minimum level do you want? Do you want, it won't be like, okay, so if somebody is saying that, okay, I want a private access on those records, then you are the minimum access level you're going to give through OWD is private. And then people who want to see it, then you're going to give them additional access through roles and through other things. But the minimum setting that you're going to do in that case should be private because there is no way where the setting OWD is public, but only for your records you want to private. You can't do that. So basically, at first thing that if you wanted to do something like that, you have to make sure the minimum access is private, and then people who need the access, you will give them through roles, sharing, manual sharing, etc. Does it make sense, Kiran? Uh, yes. So you're saying that whatever organization by defaults will take over first, rather yes. than your Okay. Yeah. So Thank if you. you want, if you want that, okay, my records to be private, then you you have to make the OWD to be private, and then widen up the access through rules or sharing rules, etc. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Okay. So, so we were discussing the sharing settings. Now there is one more thing we have is the granting access using hierarchies. Now what does that mean? So let's say if you go to the sharing settings, this particular checkbox, granting access using hierarchies, is basically telling you that okay for let me log out and log in back. Just log in back again and start with code. So here, um, let's go to the sharing settings. So there's this checkbox called grant access using the hierarchy. So when you have OWD set to private, okay, then you you can give more access through roles. Okay, if this checkbox is checked, means you want the role hierarchy to come into consideration when the OWD is private. In the case, if you do not want the role hierarchy to come into consideration, you can uncheck this checkbox. In the case of the in the case of the standard objects, you cannot change this checkbox. As you can see here, you do not have the permission to uncheck this. Grant access using hierarchies comes by default. So in the case of the other in the case of the custom objects, you can make you can uncheck this checkbox. Now what this uncheck will do is basically tell that okay, whatever the OWD is, just take that into consideration. Do not worry about roles. Do not even look at the roles. So people who are above you in the role hierarchy, they still not be able to see your records because your grant access using hierarchy is unchecked. Okay, that is what this particular checkbox does. And for the standard objects, you are not able to change the um, change this particular checkbox value. Did you get it? Yes, 
Okay. So the next we have. Uh, Rita, can you please uh, repeat that last sentence? Grant so, access like, using. So grant access using hierarchy. Okay. Let me come back to this one once we do the roles. Okay. So now let's uh, because once you know the roles, then you will understand what this is. So here, let's say invoice is set on public read only. Now let's move it back to private. Okay. Let's move it back the invoice records to private and hit the save button. So invoice is set to private means people are only going to see the records that they created. Okay, and they're not going to see any other records. Salesforce admin will still will be able to see all the records because he's a Salesforce admin. Okay? Salesforce admin will see not only his records, but he will see John record, he will see Jyoti records. Okay, because he's a Salesforce admin. But if you go out and log out and log in back again as John or Jyoti, then they won't be able to see any other. They will only be able to see the records that are created by me. Why I keep getting verification? Okay, so if you go to the invoices, because the they're only seeing these two records, because these are the two records that they created. Now, how will I want to make sure? So let's say, so then let's say I have, then these are some, when you have OWD is set to private, okay? When OWD is set to private, then you have something called as roles. Now, what does this role mean is basically, if somebody is above you in the role hierarchy, let's say, John, Let's say we have is John. Okay, so we have John and the John. Okay, so John, he is the um, he is the employee. Okay, he is the employee, and uh, he has a manager called. Uh, Adam. Okay, he has a manager called Adam. Now, if the OWD for the invoices is private, if the OWD for the invoice is private, okay, even though if you have the grant access checkbox checked, which is by default, you should always keep it checked. So what will happen is, since Adam is the manager of John, Adam will automatically will get will get the access to the records created by John. That is what the role is because he is above in the role hierarchy because he is the manager to the John. But if there is a colleague of John, which let's say there's a colleague called Chris, if there's a colleague of John, then they won't be able, he won't be able to see John record because they do not have and they do not come in role hierarchy. They are in the same level. Okay, they are in the same level. So that is what, but Adam is going to see the John record because Adam is the manager of John. So no matter what, Adam will still be able to see John record even though the OWD is private. Okay, OWD is private. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Similarly, Sakina, so it's it's just the internet connection at your side. If everybody else can see it, then hear it, then I think it's just your internet. So uh, let's see. So what we have here is we have John and we have created a, a manager called Adam. Similarly, similarly, if we create a senior manager and his name is let's say. Um, Angela or something. Okay, let's say we have a senior manager. Then even though the John, the, even the OWD is private, okay, OWD is private, then what will happen is John will be able, Adam will be able to see John records and Angela will be able to see all the Adam records as well as the records created by John because in the role hierarchy, he is above both of them. Okay, so no matter OW, what the OWD is, if the OWD is private, that's when role comes into picture and role is basically to give access to people above your level. Okay, they will automatically get access because they are above your level in the role hierarchy. So 
if how we are going to do it so if we go back right now nobody is able to see each other's record they're only seeing the records that they have they have created so now if i go out log out and log in back again as salesforce developer like the system admin and i can set up the roles okay how can i do it i can go to the role section here you have something called as roles so these are a territory based sample you have a product based sample and then you have a company based size sample so these are the different ways that you can set up okay set up the role hierarchy to control how your organization reports and accesses the data so if you wanted to set up a role so let's go ahead and click on the setup roles okay here you can specify you can create your own roles and if you click on the plus button it will show all the other roles that they have okay so let's say we have a svp of human resources and we have sales and marketing and under svp of sales and marketing you have all these different uh, vp of internet so these are different different roles that you have okay so now as you can see under ceo we have a cfo ceo both are the, they, these two are at the same level and under SVP, we have VP of International Sales and then you have VP of Marketing. So let's go ahead and create your own role here. So let's go ahead and create a role. Okay, add a role. Now here, this role reports to SVP of Customer Service and whatever is there. So this particular customer service and support. So this particular role reports to this person. Okay, so let's name the role as senior vice president. So we'll call it as VP of customer service. Okay, I'm just picking up something. And hit the save button. Okay, so now we have set up a role. So set up a role we have is, we now we have a role of VP of customer service. Now let's give this user, now we let's go ahead and give this particular role to whom let's say i give this you can select based on Select users from here, all users, find. So you will see all these users. So we have three different users, Jyoti, Kanna, and John Q. So leave Deepika aside because she's a system admin here. So let's say John becomes the VP of customer service. Okay, John becomes the VP of customer service. Okay, and hit the save button. And Jyoti becomes the SVP of customer service. Okay, so, uh, so VP is John. Now, if you go back here, so this role reports to SVP. Okay, so John is the VP here. So who is the SVP now? Let's say we assign this user, this particular all users. Let's say John becomes the VP. So we will give Jyoti the access to the, she becomes the SVP. Okay, and hit the save button. So what I've done is, who reports to whom now? John reports to Jyoti. Okay, this is what we have, John reports to Jyoti. So what will happen is, if you log in as Jyoti, then Jyoti will not only see her records, she will also see John records because John is now reporting to her. Okay, so now, so here the John is the, John is reporting to Jyoti because John is what? John is the VP of customer service. And Jyoti is the SVP. So let's go ahead and log out and log in back again as Jyoti. Okay. So if you go to Jyoti here. And if you go to invoices, click go. Here under the invoices. Now Jyoti is able to see the records created by John, which is seven and eight. If you go to John seven, you will see that these records are created by John. Okay, and she was automatically seeing her records because she has access to her own records, but she's able to see the seven and eight, even though those are John records because of the role hierarchy. Okay, if you uncheck the checkbox where it says grant access using hierarchies, then what will happen is this role hierarchy will not come into consideration. So if I log out and log in back again as Salesforce developer. So right now, Jyoti is able to see John records. Okay. But if you go back to the sharing settings, 
if you go back to the sharing settings and if you edit the if you scroll down and if you edit the invoice from private to public read sorry i'm sorry leave it as private and uncheck this grant access using hierarchy. So what is the name indicated as the name says grant access using hierarchies. So if you have unchecked means do not consider the hierarchies into any more consideration. So even though John is reporting to Jyoti, but we have this as unchecked, then now Jyoti will no longer see John records because now role hierarchies are not considered into action. So if I log and log in back again as John, sorry, Jyoti. Jyoti will not see John records anymore because the grant access is taken away. The grant access using hierarchy. So she no longer see the records that are created by John because we have unchecked that checkbox which was specifying to consider role hierarchies into picture. People, somebody who had a doubt about it, does she understood? Did you get it? What is the, what is the purpose of the checkbox? Yes, I got it. Okay, so that is what the access to the grant access. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, uh, this might not be related. Remember when we had uh, created John first, he had a customer, um, a custom platform user uh, mm -hmm. to start off with. Now those are different licenses. So when he still had that, would he be? Will we be able to put him under the hierarchy or? Okay, I lost you there. I, I can't hear you. So tell me one, one more time, what is your doubt? Hey, I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear you. Uh oh. Okay, so now tell me what is it? You can write it or something. I think Sakina, yeah, maybe you have. Yeah. I'm having trouble. I can hear you sometimes and I, then I can't. So it's like hey. on and off. Um. So you know, try like not now because we're just almost gonna finish. But tomorrow, like try deleting your browser history or something. Sometimes there's a cache uh, issue. Or try which browser are you trying? Chrome. Yeah. So uh, yeah, just try to delete history. Don't don't do it now because we're just almost finished. So okay, write down what's your question. And one more thing, you can create up to 500 roles for an organization. Okay? If the user is different license with the role hierarchy, determine the users who can be put in the hierarchy. No, see, since the John and Jyoti both belong to two different licenses, we still will be able to assign the role, no matter what licenses they are coming from. So that doesn't matter. Since John had a custom platform license, Jyoti has a different license, it doesn't matter. So even if both have the same licenses, you can still assign them in the hierarchy. So no, the licenses doesn't come into picture when we're talking about the rules here. So nobody, if they have same licenses or if they belong to two different set of licenses, doesn't matter. You can assign anybody in any role. Okay. So we now have access to the standard objects too. Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so now we'll have access to the... No, but why? Why? Because... Oh, let's, let's, let's just... Oh, that's a very good point. Let me just... Let's just... So now Jyoti... Let's just see it. So if the Jyoti is from the standard user and the John is from the platform user. Okay. And uh, John is from the platform user. So, okay, let's do the reverse. Let's assign John the uh, the uh, the SVP and make Jyoti the VP, okay? And that that will help you, right? Yeah. So let's do that and let's see what it is. What's going to be the answer? Very good question. So I'm interested to see. Now if I go out and log out and log in back, 
and uh, now Jyoti and uh, Jyoti down here. So let's go to the Salesforce developer and uh, here let's go to the roles and go to the roles here and uh, set up the roles and uh, so you have these different views you can show and true view, show and sorted list view so let's go ahead and uh, instead of doing it from here let's just do it from the users you go to the user you select John, you make her instead of VP, you make him the SVP. Okay, SVP of customer service and support. And Jyoti, she becomes the VP of customer service. Okay, now hit the save button. So in this case, now Jyoti is reporting to John. Okay, Jyoti is reporting to John. So now if I go ahead and log in and log out back again as Deepika, you have to set that a sharing setting in invoice object. Come again, come again. Oh, the grant yeah. access. Oh, grant access. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Log in back Salesforce. Okay, so grant access using the hierarchies. We have given the access now. Now, if I log out and log in back again as John, let's see what he's able to see now. See, he's still not able to see because we were only giving the access on the invoice records. Okay, so on the invoice records, he will be able to see the Jyoti records, but nothing else changed. Nothing else changed except the that particular object that we were talking about. Okay, does did the uh, Sakina did it answer your question? So only for the invoice records he will be seeing everything else, but not anything else. Everything else remains same. No access on the other applications. Nothing. Nothing. Only these are the records he's going to see. And I think that's one of the questions from the uh, exam. Now the next one we have is, so we talked about the role hierarchies, so now if you go to Jyoti, Jyoti will only be able to see the records that are created by her, she won't see the John records. Okay, so this is the uh, role hierarchy. Anybody has any questions so far? Okay, the next thing that we have is the sharing rules. Okay, sharing rules. Nick, Vishali, Nasheen, everybody clear? Okay, good. Yes, I'm fine. Okay. Was it something new you learned today or was it same old, same old? Oh, Nick, all new to you. Okay, that's good. So the next thing we have is the sharing rules. Okay, so now uh, in the role hierarchy is basically guys when you have somebody above your level and they will be able to access your records and if there is a person next to you then they will be able to access the records below them. Okay, now in the sharing rules guys, let's say you have a VP here of customer service and you have a VP of sales and they wanted to access the records by each other. Okay. They are not in a role, they do not belong, they do not report to each other, okay? They do not have any, uh, they do not have any other uh, link between them. They have like a colleagues, okay? But they have in a different, different departments. So in those kind of cases, you can do something called as a sharing rule, okay? You can create a sharing rule where you can say that VP of sales is needs to access some records on that invoice object with the, the VP of customer service. So that is where the sharing rules comes into picture when you have people at the same level. They are not reporting to each other. There are nothing is like that. There's no role hierarchy, but they are at the same level. So if you wanted to give them the access, then we have something called as the sharing rules. Okay. So 
Here, if I go ahead and uh, log out and log in back again as Salesforce developer. So right now the OWD, let's take away the roles things. Okay, now let's say we, we don't give them any role. Okay, and we give them the role of this, they belong to the same. Okay, so now John Q and my tutorial wax, let me go ahead and log in as Salesforce. Just 10, 15 more minutes, guys. So here, log in as, so if you go back here, and if you go to the users, okay, and uh, now let's say, sorry, let's first look at the roles, okay? Let's pick roles which basically belong to the same level. So here, if I go under the CFO, so we have SVP of customer service and SVP of human resources and SVP of sales. So let's say one person, we make the SVP of sales and the one person we make human resources, okay? So now if I go to the users here and if you go to the users and also guys, you can only assign one role to a user. You can't have multiple roles. As you can see here also, there's only one drop down and you can only pick one role. Okay, so one is the SVP of sales. Let's make Jyoti the SVP of sales and marketing and hit the save button. And uh, let's make the John the SVP of uh, customer service and support, he's already there. So we have Jyoti, the SVP of sales. So you can see here that uh, Jyoti is the SVP of sales and then the SVP of customer service. They do both do not report to each other, okay? Nobody, nobody is above in the hierarchy. So now if you log out and log in back again as John, John is only going to see the records created by John, okay? And uh, Jyoti is only going to see the records created by Jyoti. So if you go to the invoices, John is going to see the records that are created by him. That is the nine, and, sorry, seven and eight invoices. And similarly, the uh, the uh, the uh, Jyoti is only going to see the records that are created by her. Okay, because. We still have role hierarchies, but they both are not reporting to each other. So if you go to the invoices section, she's only seeing the records that are created by her. Now, how we will do it? We are going to go ahead and create the sharing rules. So in order to create the sharing rules, you can say log out and we'll go back to the Salesforce developer here. And you can go to the sharing settings and scroll down in the sharing settings. You can basically create the rules here, okay? If you wanted to create a sharing rules for lead, you can create account sharing rules, opportunities, all these objects. Similarly, if you scroll down, you will see our custom object as well, invoice sharing rules. So this one, we will create a new sharing rule here. And here we can basically specify which records to be shared, okay? So we can say that, okay, the records that are created on, by this role, okay, roles and subordinates, roles means only the person with that role, whatever records he created will only will be shared. Roles and subordinate means people under him, okay, as well as him. So all the, recorders create, all the records created by him and the people under him will be able to access the records, okay. So all the records which is only created by this role. So which role? Let's say the SVP of sales and marketing. Who is SVP of sales and marketing? Jyoti. So all the records that are created by Jyoti, then which user we wanted to share? We wanted to share the, those roles with the VP, the SVP of customer service and support, which is John. Okay. So they both are not reporting to each other, but we are sharing the records that are which records the records which are owned by the member of this role roles and subordinate means this role and people reporting to that role okay so whatever records all those people created we are going to share them with the role which belongs to this particular user okay what access level do you want to give you can either say them read access means we'll be only able to read those records you can also give them read or write access Okay, so let's say if we only wanted to give them the read access, means people will be able to only read it. Use sharing rules to make automatic exceptions to your OWD settings for defined set of users. Roles in subordinate includes all the user in a role and the roles below that role. Okay, that is what the subordinates and roles means. 
you can use the sharing rules only to grant wider access to data, not to restrict access. So anything that we have done so far is only to give them more access, not to take away the access that they already have. So here, what we can see is the label we can see is invoice sharing, okay, SVP to S so sales to marketing, okay. Sales to customer service. So let's say this is our label. You can put whatever description and hit the save button. Recalculation of sharing access will continue in the background. You will receive an email once complete. So re automatically they will, they will go through the process of tweaking the sharing settings and everything and it will take some time. You will get an email once it's done. So now if I log out and log in back again as John, now what will happen is all the records shared from the SVP of sales and marketing to the SVP of customer service, right? Something like that. So if you go back here, uh oh, log out and log in back again. Eh? Now if I go to G Jyoti, now Jyoti, if you go to the invoices, She is, her sharing is not yet enabled, but John will be able to see the Jyoti's one because we have, through the manual, through the sharing, sorry, we have enabled that access. So if you go on and go to John, this time what will happen is, John, if you go to invoices, John will be able to see the records which are created by Jyoti, okay? That is what this 0, 7, 8, 9, 10 is. So basically, because we have enabled the sharing. So in this case, people are not reporting to each other. We have two people belonging to the same, like same role, kind of same hierarchy. So in this case, if you wanted to give them more access, so now they're only able to read these objects. Okay, they're not able to delete it. So if you go, because we have only given them the read access. So here, if you go back, they do not have the permissions. Okay, this is what the sharing rule is. Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, it, one of the uh, certification questions we have this thing, a similar thing, but it was with, it's with teams. So what is teams? Like if uh, 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 if uh, we want members of one team to access the uh, records of a di different team, is it just the same thing? Yeah. Yeah, this is because they both have the same, they, they both have the same role hierarchy. So they wear the same hierarchy. So there's basically, they're not talking about role hierarchy, they're talking about sharing rules. Is that what your question is? Uh, yeah, it, 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 the verbiage was like uh, from one account team to the uh, a different account team. So I was wondering, the, is, it's all uh, done through sharing rules, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when because they both have same. See, roles comes with they'll specify that this person reports to this person. Okay, so then you will talk about role hierarchy. But since we, since in this question that you're asking, it is basically they're not talking about role hierarchy. They're talking about people who are at the same level and they wanted to share the records. So that is the sharing. And uh, what's the option of that public group? Uh, we saw role, roles, and subordinate. Yeah. What's so the next that? we have is the public group is basically it's. Only the system admin is able to create these public groups and public group is basically to add, create a group of people, okay? So here, let me go back, log out. So basically public groups are the set of users that only administrators are permitted to create and edit. And once they have created the public groups, public groups, other users will be able to use them in their organization. So in the public groups, you can contain individual users. You can add users belonging to a particular role or hierarchy. You can like kind of create a group of anything, okay? Group, group of, so let's say if you go ahead and go to the public user, so public group here. So here you can create a public group is a group, set of users. It can individual users means you can add one user from one team, the other user from other team, etc. You can create other groups like a group of uh, like a, a particular sales team, etc. User which belong to a particular role, you can specify a group. So basically you can do all these things in the public group. So let's go ahead and create a new public group here. Here you can specify search by the other roles 
so which so you create a group of let's say customer service and support you can add another group of svp so you can do the based on roles you can let's say create a group of uh, whatever whatever so just any individual so let's say the subordinates similarly you can add manually you can select some users and you can add those users here so you can create a public group you can create a group of different roles and hierarchies you can do anything like that and then you basically you can so let's say if there is a certain record which only needs to be shared by let's say cfo of some companies okay let's say opportunities only needs to be shared by different departments only with the c level executives then you can add those c level executives in a public group and you can you can just give them that object access to that public group does that make sense so public group is nothing but creating a group of users and once you have created a public group you can share your records with that particular public group that's it that's that's just the public group you does not have to have belong to a same role no they can be anybody they can be a role belong a bunch of roles bunch of uh, associates bunch of whatever okay let's say you are working on a project okay so you will add you will create this public group which you will add all your qa people all your developers all your deployment people etc so you created a group for that specific project okay so you can share all the details with that public group so that public group contains different roles different users etc depending to different departments all those things so you can create a public group and public groups can only be set by the system admin but once you have once the system admin has set up those public groups anybody can use them okay now similarly there was one more thing when we were talking about a sharing rule so in the previous example what we did is we specified only that okay the users who created the records that are created by this role okay the records that are created by this role assign and uh, give the permission to the other other group of users okay or other uh, other role okay so similarly you can also create a sharing rule based on a criteria of records so let's say you wanted to create a new sharing rule where you doesn't want to do it on the based on the record owner but you wanted to do it based on a criteria let's say if let's say you all the sales belonging to north region okay so you can do it based on the field level so let's say if pick up all the records where the um, open date is let's say not equal to or less than or greater than so and so then you can base you can not only do it on the based on the record owner you can also specify on the based on the criteria of the record so if the particular records have those certain values let's say if the, the records that are created by after may you wanted to share with certain people you can do that so that is another sharing rule that you can create get it okay so how many you can create you can create up to 50 criteria based sharing rules can be created per object so you can create 50 of these criteria based sharing rules now last topic is the manual sharing so what is this manual sharing is basically users can manually share certain type of record with other users within the salesforce application okay some objects that you can automatically share uh, so let's say if if a user has shared the one of their account records to somebody else then not only the account records will be shared but since account record has the child objects like opportunities and cases that those will also get shared because those are connected to that particular account okay so basically like some if you just randomly wanted to pick a uh, wanted to share a record with somebody so let's say if you want to go to the invoices if you go ahead and uh, go to invoice and you just wanted to manually share this record with let's say invoice 6 is created by system admin and you wanted to manually share this record with john okay so you can go ahead and pick that particular user from here so automatically you will be able to share this invoice 6 with that particular 
uh, that particular user. So there's no, there's nothing like role hierarchy. There's no sharing, nothing. So randomly you pick the record and you wanted to share with someone else, then you can go ahead and do something called as manual sharing. So now if you go ahead and go to the John, then John will now see this particular record called invoice six. So if I go ahead and log out and log in back again as John. So if I go to the John Q here, and if you log in as John Q, now John Q is also going to see additional invoice record 06 because that was manually shared with him. Okay, so this is what the manually sharing is. Okay, so you can take away the access, you can give them the access. The sharing button will only appear if the object OWD is so the sharing button will not appear if the object OWD is publicly read and write because everybody is seeing every other record so you do not need a sharing. Only in the case of when you have private and you wanted to share your data with somebody else which does not belong to any role or anything you can just manually share it with the other person. So that is what the manual sharing is. Got it? Any questions so far? Okay. Now, we have something called as queue. Okay, queue is basically allow the group of users to manage the records. Okay, so basically a queue is a place where you select where the records can be routed to process by a member. Okay. So let's say if you are working in a customer support, okay, and you have tickets coming in. So basically what you did is you specify all the records belonging to this object, okay, assign them to these particular users. So that is basically a queue, a queue of records and a queue of users. So individually every, so manually they would, so, so queue is basically is a location where the records can be routed to, to, for processing by a group of members. So the record will remain in the queue until a user accepts them for processing or they are transferred to another queue. So basically it will, the records will remain until somebody accepts them or somebody basically transfers them to a different queue. So basically when you're creating a queue, you specify that, okay, which records will go under that queue and also what set of users that queue belong to. So let's go ahead and log out and log in back again here. And if you go to the Salesforce developer, So here you can specify a queue, okay? And here it'll ask you, a queue allows the group of user to manage a shared workload more effectively. A queue is a location where records will be routed to await processing by a group member. The records remain in the queue until a user accepts them for processing or they are transferred to a different queue. You can specify the set of objects that are supported by each queue as well as the, the users which are allowed to retrieve the records. Okay? So now if you go ahead and create a new queue here, always read those definitions. Always. Okay? So here we are going to specify the name of the queue, let's say all the customer service tickets. Okay? So we can specify all the customer service tickets we can specify in a queue. Okay? And you can basically once some, if something happens, any changes, you'll get an email. Select the objects you want to assign to this queue. Okay, so let's say all the objects related to invoice. Queue members, who will be the, to, to add members, select a type of member or you can base it on base it on the user, you can pick it up on the groups, you can like any kind of, you can pick from here. So let's say I wanted to assign John and uh, John and uh, Jyoti to this particular queue. Okay, so this is what the queue is. So you, you specify what objects will be, um, what records will be entered into queue and who will be accessing the queue. So this is what a queue is. So either the records can be manually added to a queue or you can even use something like a uh, assignment rules. Okay, so you can say that all the cases starting with uh, from all the cases belonging to uh, North region assign it to this 
particular queue, all the all the cases belonging to South region assignment. So queue is nothing but a group of users to manage a particular workload. So all so that is what a queue is. So today we learned about profiles, permission sets, rules. Then we talked about sharing rules, manual sharing, queue, and uh, what else. This is what we covered today. Any questions so far? Was it no difficult? Uh, was it too fast? It was a good class. Huh? No. Okay, good. It was a good class. You know? oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, any questions? Okay. So let's. So this is what I have for today. Tomorrow I, we're going to talk about reports and dashboards, etc. And then probably if we get time, we'll talk about approval processes and all that workflows. Okay. Okay, guys, then I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah.